no, not another JavaScript framework, please, don't we have enough of those? But what if I told you that this isn't actually a framework, it's a compiler? <sighs> Mind blow. <laughs> All right, hello class, and welcome to this video where we learn about what Svelte is and then use it to create an app that implements full CRUD functionality by using an API that I created a while ago for a video to which a link is in the description. And the link for that API as well will be in the description. More on that later. So what is Svelte and what makes it different to the other ones? So like Angular, React and Vue, Svelte is a UI framework for creating component-based single page applications. The catch is that Svelte takes a different approach in that it doesn't have framework code that's actually bundled with your application. It actually goes over your code in build time and then compiles all of your code into instructions in written in purely JavaScript, uh, leading to a very lean bundle size because later your bundle wouldn't have any code that's re relevant to Svelte itself. It's just your own code that you have. And Svelte as well takes a, a reactive approach when re-rendering your uh, DOM and, and it doesn't have a virtual DOM. So it doesn't work by com um, rather comparing a virtual DOM to an actual DOM and then seeing the difference and then re-rendering the difference. Instead, it watches over a couple of variables that you define and then whenever any of those change, it actually re-renders the DOM. So they take great pride in that uh, it takes less code uh, doing the same thing, you could do the same thing in React and do it in Svelte and you will uh, be less code when you write it in Svelte. You can actually go here to learn more and write less code and you will see a couple of examples they show that, for example, this is um, uh, with these two fields and calculating the sum between them, this is what it would look like if you would write it in React uh, using hooks and then this is what it would look like if you write it in Svelte. And uh, I've, I've played the round with Svelte and it's actually pretty cool how, how less code you get to write and even like the template syntax itself is very minimal and it's got some really cool features. Now this doesn't mean it's going to re uh, replace React or anything. Uh, React still has a lot of like improvements during the runtime and, and some other cool features that are in the bundle itself. Uh, so yeah, I guess it's up to your preference. Now if you are saying now I want to learn more about uh, Svelte, you can go to svelte.dev rather and learn more about it. And if you want to like understand like this, the idea behind it and the philosophy behind it, I highly recommend this talk by Rich Harris, the guy that made the framework himself. Uh, this talk is called Rethink and Reactivity. I'll put a link to this as well in the description. It's a really cool talk that kind of explains why Svelte was made. All right, so this is the application that we're going to build uh, in this video. So it's got these uh, posts, it's pulling them from the API. So it's uh, fetching these posts and showing them here. And we can add some more new posts. So we can click add here using that form. And we'll actually submit it to, to a server and fetch the, um, the response back. And if we reload, it's still there because of the way the API works. We can as well edit these like just type some other gibberish here and click update and it will be edited. And we can delete these posts. Uh, we can limit the number of posts. And we have this navbar right here and we have like two pages that we can navigate between just to show you like how to do routing in Svelte. So the idea behind uh, this app is that you get to learn some of the core things that you would do in a in most front-end applications like handling forms, uh, consuming a full CRUD API and routing as well. So. Let's actually jump into the code. All right, so on the Svelte main page, let's go down and get this npx command from here. Let's copy this. And I'll go to my desktop and open up a terminal window and paste this command. And uh, we don't have to name it my Svelte project. We can name it anything. I'll just name it Svelte for now and hit enter. And then now we need to cd into it. Also, I'll say cd Svelte. And here we need to run npm install because it hasn't installed the dependencies yet. And I'll open it using VS Code and uh, let it install. So if we look at the package JSON, we notice that we have a couple of scripts and we're going to use the dev script to build and run the app on a um, development server. And if you notice here, there isn't any dependencies. It's just dev dependencies because it doesn't need any dependencies in production. It only needs them in uh, build time to compile the app. So here, I think it's done installing. It has. Let's run npm run dev and see what our application looks like. All right, it started already. So let's go to port 5000 here. And there we go, we just get a, a purple hello world. So let's look at our app. 
So we go to the source folder, and we have this main.js that instantiates the new uh, Svelte app and passes some props to the app Svelte, just to show you how props work, they did that. And here we get the prop, and here we put the prop inside the markup saying hello name. If you notice, we, if you change this name to hello uh, YouTube, or just YouTube, it will now say hello YouTube. All right, so let's get rid of these props because we're not gonna use them. And let's get rid of this export let name and this style as well. And by the way, in Svelte, um, if you've worked with Vue, you're familiar with this um, with this uh, kind of syntax. You have a script tag where you put your logic, you have a style tag where you have put your styling, and you have your markup. The only difference here, you don't have a template uh, tag, you just put your markup down here. And the uh, cool thing is if you're um, using Prettier, and by the way, uh, I recommend you get the Svelte, where is it? Right here, the Svelte VS Code extension to have uh, syntax highlighting inside of your app or I mean inside of your .svelte files. All right, let me close that, close this. Now, before we write any markup, I wanna grab uh, Materialize CSS, which is a cool CSS uh, implementation of Google Material, Material Design Standards. Uh, let's go to Get Started. And here it tells us to install Materialize CSS at next. So let's do that. So here I'll, I'll stop the development server and say npm install materialize dash CSS at next, like this. Okay, now we need to link the CSS. Uh, we could link it here, we will, but by default, the build tool for, uh, the bundling tool for Svelte is a rollup instead of a webpack, and it comes with very minimal uh, setup. So we need to actually install a, a, a plugin for this, for it to actually recognize CSS files inside of the Svelte files and bundle them into a CSS file in production. So here I'm gonna install a rollup plugin. So here I'll say npm install a rollup, plugin CSS only and uh, say dash uh, capital D for it to be uh, a dev dependency. All right, now in the uh, rollup config, I'm gonna add this import. Let's import that plugin. So let's say import CSS from uh, rollup uh, plugin CSS only. And then here underneath this uh, spelt uh, call, we're gonna say CSS, we call that uh, namespace that imp we imported, that function. And here for the options, we just pass output. And uh, here we will pass a, a CSS file that would be all the bundled CSS that we pass to, the, to our app. So here I'll say public slash extra dot CSS. So what this plugin now will do, it will find any CSS that we inject into Svelte files and, and bundle all of it into this extra.css file. And it will be in the public uh, right here. So we need to link it in our index.html. So here let's uh, link it before our actual CSS. So here we'll say link, and we we'll say the href will be extra.css, even though it doesn't exist yet, but it will. Uh, let's change the title here. So it says Svelte tutorial. And let's save this and let's go back to our app Svelte. Now we can actually import CSS into this Svelte file. So here we'll say import. Now that we have um, materialized installed, we can say import. We go back one level to node uh, modules, Oops. node modules slash materialize CSS slash dist slash CSS slash materialize dash css dot min, or actually materialize dot min dot css like this. And we can just copy this to get the, the JavaScript. And here we'll say slash js, and here it will be dot min dot js like this. Now let's, let's save everything. And let's run our app again. Let's say npm run dev. And now we see that it created this extra CSS and it's got materialized stuff as you see here. And it's actually linked materialize. And if we would look at our app, where is it? Right here. If we reload, we get that it's, uh, the header is now styled with materialized uh, uh, CSS header one styling. Cool. So we have materialized linked. I wanna start by um, putting a navbar at the top of the page to link to different pages. Now, of course, the about page is empty. I'm just using it to show you how to do routing in Svelte. So we're gonna use this uh, Svelte routing library because uh, by default, the routing library doesn't come with Svelte. So this is how to use it. We need to run this command right here. So let's copy that. 
And uh, let's open up a new window, terminal window, and paste that uh, command. So if we look at the uh, library here, it tells us how to use it. It tells us to import these things from Svelte Routing, so we can um, we can copy this. And let's go to our app, uh, app.svelte. We can close these. We don't need them anymore. So here we will import these um, router and link and route from Svelte Routing. And now we can set up our router here. So here we'll say router. And then here we will start to put uh, our routes. But the way I want to do it, I want to put them in a navbar. I don't want to put them right here. I want to put the navbar in its own component. So let's go to, actually I closed it. Let's go to materialize CSS, go to components and uh, right here navbar. Let's grab this uh, nav tag and uh, let's go back, copy that and let's click uh, here. Let's create rather a new component. And I'm going to put this in a folder called layout. So I'll say layout slash navbar dot svelte and here we'll just paste that let's change logo to uh, say svelte uh, tutorial and uh, let's change these let's just have two pages so one would be the home page and one would be the about page and we need to create these components as well and uh, now these shouldn't be uh, a tags they need to be links for our svelte router to work so here we'll change this uh, anchor tag to a link like this, a link. Now, of course, we need to import it. So here we need to put our script tag, and here we will say import link from Svelte dash routing like this. Now we can use that. So we can change as well the the brand to link like this. We need to add a to attribute instead of uh, href. And this is the home, so we'll say to slash. And now we have this home link here as well. So we'll say to slash like this. And we will change this to a link. And this is the about page. So we'll say to uh, slash about. And change this here to a link as well. Now let's go back to our app. Here we need to put our navbar. So we need to import it. So let's go here and say import navbar from, and on the same level, we go to the layout folder and we get this navbar. And here, of course, we have to add Svelte because um, it's not a JavaScript file. We need to explicitly say what the extension is. Now that we have navbar, we can actually use it in our markup. So let's put it inside the router. So let's say like this navbar, oops. Apparently I didn't copy that. So I can just say navbar like this. And uh, underneath here, I want to put a container to push uh, everything into the middle. This is, by the way, just materialized stuff. And here we need to put our routes. And if we would look at the uh, page for the package, uh, our routes are like this. And uh, by the way, you, uh, you can ignore this URL uh, thing. This is only if you're using server-side rendering. So don't worry about that. And uh, let's copy one of these routes. Let's copy the second one, actually. Let's go back here. We need to put routes. So let's put the home route. The path will be just slash and the component will be home. And by the way, you can use the syntax, but you can as well omit these um, quotation marks. They're not important. Um, so they're not necessary. So let's put another one here and say slash about, and this will be to the about component. Let's create these two pages. I'll create another folder, call it pages. Uh, this is what, a convention that I like to separate pages from components. Um, this is not a Svelte com, uh, convention. So here I'll say home.svelte and I'll create another one as well, call it about.svelte. And in the about, I'm just going to put a header one saying about page just to differentiate between them. And here for now, let's put a home page and we'll come back to it, of course, and populate it more. And uh, here we don't need link, so we can remove it because the links are in the navbar. And we need to import these two components. So here let's say import home from same level pages slash home dot svelte. And then we can copy that, paste it one more time, select home and control D and say about. All right, let's save all files and Let's look at our terminal. Everything is running fine. If we look at our app, right, where is it? Right here. If we reload, cool, we get this navbar and uh, it's linking between the pages, but it looks kind of weird. Let's look at our app. I think it's got to do with the, uh, the global styles.
yeah there are some global styles here i'm just gonna delete all of them and let's look back to our app because we're gonna use the materialized styling all right let's put a container actually to push these buttons in and for some reason this brand isn't uh the font size is tiny on that so actually let me check that to so inspect it's actually not applying the class to it so and let's go back here to the navbar the brand logo class is not being applied so what we can do we can just wrap this as felt tutorial with a span with this class so we'll give that class brand logo and then take that put it inside of here and then wrap everything here so let's cut everything inside of this uh, nav wrapper and put a dot container tab and then paste back those links and let's save and there we go, now the, the, the navbar logo class is applied, so the text is bigger there, and the links are pushed in inside. So the routing is working now, we can start to work on the content on the homepage. Let's start to uh, hit our API and fetch the posts and show them here. So let's go to our app, let's go to the uh, home.svelte file, and we can close this, close the global CSS and the app, and everything else. And here I'll put a row, and inside of here we want to show our posts, but of course we need to hit the API first and, and fetch these posts. So here I'll open the script tag, let me close this uh, terminal. Here inside the script tag, what we want to do, we want to fetch these uh, posts when the component loads or mounts. So we need to import this lifecycle method called onMount, so let's say import onMount, this is in the uh, documentation of course, from Svelte. And uh, here, let's um, let's bring our API base URL. So here I'll say const API base URL because we'll need this to call the API. This is in the description, um, in the video description. And here, let's initialize our posts um, object as an empty array at the beginning. So now let's call this on mount method and say on mount. And this takes a callback that happens when the component is mounted. And uh, this is gonna reach for, for uh, this is gonna hit the API, so I'm gonna make it an async callback. So here I'll say uh, async, oops. And here it's gonna be an arrow function. And inside of here I'll say const result or res equals uh, await dot, um, fetch. I'm gonna use fetch API and I'm gonna give it the API base URL plus slash posts like this. This is the route that gives us all the posts. And here we'll say posts, our, so this variable right here, equals um, await, await res dot, oops, dot json like this. So the way fetch works is that you need to as well return response.json and this returns uh, a promise with uh, the data that's got from that uh, request. And now when we assign a value to post, our component will actually re-render. Now let's use these posts to display them on the template. Here I want to loop through these posts. So first I want to do a conditional because if we're still fetching the posts, I want to show um, loading posts. So here we'll open curly braces and do hash if, and this is felt uh, template syntax, and we'll say posts.length equals zero. So if the length of post equals zero, that means we haven't got posts yet. So I'll do a header three and say loading posts dot dot dot. So you can put a spinner here if you want. And here we'll say colon else, so else, if we have any posts, if it's not zero, the length, we want to loop through them. So we'll open uh, another JavaScript expression and say hash each, uh, or just an expression and say posts as post, like this. The, this is kind of similar to PHP if you've worked with it, this syntax, post as post. So here we'll say uh, div dot call dot uh, S6, this is materialized stuff. I want each post to take half the width of the um, the viewport of or like the width of the container. And here I'm gonna put a card, so dot card. And uh, inside the card, uh, we need card content. Uh, so dot card content. And inside that div, uh, I'm gonna start with the title. So dot, let's say paragraph p dot card title. 
And inside of here, we'll do curly braces to put um, dynamic values. And now that we have access to this post, we can use what comes inside of the post. By the way, you can um, call uh, CRUD this API on Postman or something, and you'll find that posts have a body, a created at, a user ID, and um, and the title. So here we'll need to say the title because this is the card title. So we'll say post dot title like this. Uh, I want to show as well the created at. So here we'll say p, and uh, I'll say uh, curly brace post dot created at like this. And uh, let's put the body of the post. So here paragraph another one, and say post dot body like this. Here we need to close the each tag. So here we'll say we open curly braces and we say slash each and this will close that tag. And here we need to close as well this if uh, statement. So he'll, he will say curly brace slash if like this. All right, let's save this and see what this looks like. Let's go to our app and there we go. We're getting uh, three posts, which are all the posts that are in the database right now. If we reload, we'll see loading posts for like a brief second before the actual posts load. All right, so let's add the two buttons for editing and deleting. And I want to style this a bit to make it look better than that. All right, let's go back. So underneath this div, this card content div, I'm going to add dot card action. And here we'll have two links. So one anchor tag with doesn't go anywhere. And um, this is going to be the edit post. So here we'll say edit. And uh, I'm just going to copy this and add another one, which is going to be delete. And I'll give this a class to, to later style it. So I'll give it a class of delete uh, her dash btn. Uh, let's save. Let's see what these look like. All right, they look okay. And uh, I want to style this uh, delete button. So here, let's open up a style tag. And um, by the way, these styles are scoped to these components. So any style I write here will not go to any other component, even if the component is inside of here. So here we'll style the um, the delete button. So I'll say dot uh, delete uh, dash btn. I just want to give it like a, a color of uh, red. And uh, I'm going to give this important for it to apply. And I want to style the card title. So I'll say dot card dot card content dot card title to target that. And I just want to there's this um, syntax completion is a bit weird with this uh, extension right now, but I guess that will be fixed in the near future because this is fairly new. So here we'll say uh, margin bottom. I want to give it a margin bottom of zero, and I want to style as well the uh, this date the created that. So I'm going to give it a class. Where is this? Right here. I'm going to give it a class of time stamp, and here we'll say. So we can just copy this. Instead of card title, this will be p dot uh, time stamp, and I'll just oops, I'll just give this a color of like a gray, like hash uh, nine nine nine, and I'll give it some margin bottom so it separates itself from the body. So margin bottom of ten pixels. All right, let's see what this looks like. All right, it looks better. So let's go back. Now we can make these into a, a component by itself, but uh, we're going to make some other components. So I'll show you how to make components anyways. Uh, here, let's give these two buttons a callback, like a, like a function that will be triggered when they're clicked. And for this, we're going to use the on directive. So here we'll say on colon, and now we give the type of the event. So here we're going to give the event click and then say equal and open an expression. And here we can uh, pass uh, a function that will be triggered once this button is clicked. So here I'll pass a callback because otherwise it will uh, trigger it right when the uh, the component is rendered. And here I'll say edit post and pass it this post. And here as well we're gonna give a delete another event. So here I'll say on colon click uh, equals and here I'll give a callback to uh, delete post and uh, I'm going to pass the post ID and uh, we're going to implement these later. But for now, I'm just going to have them print something to the console. Okay. There's a mistake here. All right. Like this, let's go up here in the script tag. Let's create these two functions. So here we'll have edit, oops, edit post. We'll take a post and for now it's just going to console log it. So we'll just console log post like this. 
actually I need to the, use the keyword function let's create the uh, the delete post as well so function delete post will take an ID and for now I'm just gonna say um, deleting post with ID and just concatenate that ID let's save let's see if these are running properly so let's open the uh, developer tools the console and uh, I'm gonna put this side by side and here if I press edit on this actually it doesn't do anything let's go back okay I made a mistake here let's save that let's go back to our app refresh and here if I click edit there we go it's printing that post uh, that we clicked on edit and if I click delete it says deleting post with ID something something which is the ID of this post all right cool so let's go back to our app Let's uh, create the form that we will use to submit a post to the server. So on top of the, uh, this row, I'm going to add another row at the top here and say dot row. And here I'm going to have it take half the width. So I'll say uh, dot call dot s6 tab. And inside of here, don't worry about that pretty old format it. Uh, I'm going to put the form, but I'm not going to put the whole form here. I'm going to just put the component and make it into, into its own component. So here I'll say post form and then uh, just leave it like this and let's uh, import that and then create it so here I'll say import post form from I'm gonna create a folder call it components uh, and actually here we're inside pages so we have to go back one level and then say components slash post form dot svelte like this and here let's create this uh, folder components and inside of components, I'm going to create the post form dot svelte. So here we'll write our form. We'll say, uh, oops, we'll say form. Don't know why form doesn't work. I'll just say form like this. And uh, this will have a, a, a submit event. So we'll say on and the, uh, the event will be submit, submit, oops, submit equals. And we will call a function that we'll call on submit like this. And uh, let's close this form and inside the form we'll have uh, a div with the class input field and this is um, materialized stuff just to style it with the materialize here we'll have uh, two fields one field for the title and one for the body so here we'll put a label for a uh, title and it will say title like this and here we'll put the input for that title of type text and uh, this uh, here what we need to do is we need to bind the value of this input uh, with a value in our component with a, a variable so uh, svelte has a two-way binding meaning that we can use the directive called uh, bind and then give say colon value equals now we want to give um, an, the name of the value that we're going to use which we'll call title which we haven't created yet but we will so now whenever title uh, this input changes it will change title in our component and if title as well changes the value of the input will change this is what two-way binding means so let's copy this entire input field and paste it here and here we'll change this is a, um, a label for body and this will say body and this variable here as well will be called body let's add a, a submit button so we'll say button uh, we'll type submit so call and submit and click tab and we'll give it some classes to style it with materialize CSS styling we'll say waves effect waves light and BTN as well and this button will say add because it adds a post and here let's open a script tag and uh, I don't know if it's the Svelte extension or if it's prettier uh, it's probably the Svelte extension, but you can put the script tag underneath the uh, the uh, the markup, and if you save, the script tag will go up to the top, which is pretty cool. And the same thing with style, because um, logically, style should be before uh, before the HTML, because that's how cascading style sheets work. And if I save, the style tag will go up um, above the template, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's go to the script. So here we'll declare these two variables, the title and the body. So we'll say let title equals uh, an empty string and let body equals an empty string all right now we don't have any red squiggly lines but we have this green squiggly line telling us that it's not uh, the on submit is not defined so let's fix that here we'll say function on submit and we'll say it takes an event and of course first thing we do we say event.prevent default like this 
don't know why I added that underscore, Just prevent default like that. And here I'll do like a very basic uh, validation and say if title dot trim equals, don't know why it's replacing these functions, uh, equals an empty string or body dot trim. I don't know why it's changing this trim is a, a JavaScript function. This is a bit weird, but uh, let's bear with it. Uh, if if any of these two is an empty string, then we just return because we don't want to submit this because this is invalid data. Uh, you can of course show some validation errors, but uh, that's kind of JavaScript. I want to focus on Svelte more for this tutorial. So if not, we have these fields, then let's form this post and send it to our server. So here we'll say const new post is a, an object which will have a title of the value of title. So we can just say title like this and body like this. Now let's bring our uh, base URL from here. Let's copy this and uh, put it right here. And now we need to send a request, a post request to our database to persist this post. So we'll say, um, actually we'll use async await. So here we can make this an async function. We add the async keyword and here we'll say const uh, response equals await fetch. And we do backticks and here we'll say uh, dollar sign curly brace API base URL. And uh, we concatenate slash post because this is the route that we post to. And here we'll say comma and we pass some options. Uh, including the method. So the method will be uh, a post. So method post like this. And the body of the request will be json.stringify or actually string of stringify like this stringify. And we pass it the new post uh, that we just created. So now when we get that data, now we need to get the post from that data. So we'll say uh, const post equals await res dot JSON. Oops, I don't know why it's changing these variables. It's a bit annoying. It's very strange. Okay, let's save all files and uh, let's look at our app. And we broke it. <laughs> On submit is not defined. Okay. Okay, because here this is a capital S. On submit like this. All right, so we get our form. And uh, if we type anything here, so let's say post from Svelte. If we leave this empty, it shouldn't submit anything and it doesn't. And if we type some gibberish here, we click add. I think it does send a request if we look at network post. All right, so it sends a request and the status code is 201. So it's been created. Of course, we're not adding any po uh, code to show it here. But if we refresh, we see that that post has indeed been posted. Uh, I want to do something here. I want to have a loading boolean and when we send a post, it will actually show us a spinner bar that uh, that indicates that we're actually communicating to a backend. So here I'll create another variable, call it loading. So let loading equals, initially it will be false. And here when we submit the form, if it's valid, then first thing we want to do, we want to set the loading to true. So we'll say loading equals true. This is as simple as that. Just the fact that we change this variable and this variable is used in the markup, just the fact that we reassign it to a different value, it's actually going to re-render our, uh, our markup. So we set the loading to true, and then we communicate to our server. And once everything is done, we set the loading back to false. So we say loading um, equals false, false like this. Now in our markup, we let's cut this form. And here let's do curly braces, uh, hash, uh, if, and we'll say if not loading, then we want to show this form. And then here, let's say else, so colon else. And here else, if we're loading, let's do dot progress. And this is uh, materialized uh, CSS stuff. And here we'll say dot indeterminate. And this will give us like um, an indeterminate uh, loading bar or progress bar. So here we'll uh, finish, uh, close that if statement, we'll say slash if like this, and let's save. And let's go back to our app. Now, if we put some stuff here, and we hit add, there we go, we see that loading bar for a second, and then it goes away once the loading stops. Uh, let's actually make that loading bar go a bit in the middle and um, give this some padding so that it looks a bit better. So let's go back here. 
And what's cool about Svelte is that we don't have to give this a class and style it. Just because this is in just in this component, we can just say form and then style uh, style this form. And none of the other forms in any other page will get the style because this is scoped to this component. So here I'm just going to give it some margin on all sides of uh, 50 pixels. And here we'll say, uh, I want to style the progress bar. So I'll say progress. And I'll give this a margin top and bottom of 100 pixels and left and right of zero. So let's save this. Let's look at our app. So, all right, cool. The form looks much better now. And if we submit something else, that bar is in the middle here. All right. Let's work on actually adding this post to our uh, post list. Now, if, uh, by the way, I'll, of course, I'm getting all of this from the documentation. Uh, Svelte has some really cool documentation. If you go to examples, you can even fiddle with the code and change uh, the examples and how they work. And there's this thing right here called event forwarding, which is what we're going to use to communicate between the inner and the outer components that we have. So if you see here, it actually dispatches an event from inside of a component that's nested inside this component. And then based on that event, the outer uh, component will perform some action. So let's copy this import from here, this create event dispatcher. Uh, let's copy that. Actually, let's copy both of these because we need that. Let's go here. Let's paste this at the top. And uh, yeah, we can keep that there. And then after we get the post, we want to dispatch this event. So let's dispatch an event. And uh, we just say dispatch like this. And uh, let's call this event post created. And we can pass a payload. So the payload will actually be this post. Now we can uh, listen to this event on any other component and then catch that and then get this payload and do whatever we want with it. So where we want it, we want it in the home page. So here in the home page, I'm going to go down here where we uh, add our form and I'm going to listen to that event. So I'll say on and here put the name of our custom event and say post created. So on this event, we're going to call a function. And I'm going to call this add post. Simple as that. Let's go up here and create this add post. Now we want to create a function that adds that post that we got to this post array that we have. So here I'll say function add post. And if you look at the documentation, you will see that uh, the event uh, right here, actually, if we look at app.svelte, the event has this property detail, which holds our uh, payload. So here in our add post, we will we can destructure it straight away. So we will destructure detail and we can do colon and give it another name because it's um, because it makes more sense to call it post here instead of detail because it's actually a post. So here, now that we have that data, we just want to add it to our post. So we can simply say posts equals, and we do an array, and we want to put it at the top. So we'll say post, comma, and then we spread our existing posts like this. Now, uh, be careful with this. You don't want to do a uh, post dot push or unshift because when you do that, you're not assigning a new value. You're changing the variable, but you're not assigning a new value. So that wouldn't actually cause a re-render. You want to do posts equal and then you actually add your data. So let's save all files and let's look our app and see if this is working. So it's right here. Let's refresh just in case. And we can say post to be added. Uh, add this post and we click uh, enter and there we go. Our post is actually added to our front end, but our form is not resetting. So let's fix that. Let's go here. So in our form, uh, when we submit that and we dispatch the event, we can simply say um, title equals uh, an empty string and body as well. Or we can say title equals body equals empty string. So we reset both of them. All right, let's look at our app, reload just in case, and let's put some gibberish. Uh, that gets added and the fields are reset. Sweet. Let's now implement this uh, delete button. I mean, uh, give it some actual functionality. So let's go here in the home. Uh, so we have, or we already ha created this delete post uh, function, but it doesn't do anything. So here we'll say fetch. And the way our API works, we want to send uh, to the URL slash post slash uh, the ID of that post and we want to send it as a delete request. So here we'll want to concatenate our, we'll say a, a curly brace uh, dollar sign, curly brace API base URL and close that curly braces slash, slash post slash and then concatenate the ID as well. And then here we want to pass some options 
And in the options, we only want to say that the method is a delete method. And here we can use the 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 dot then syntax, uh, and then here we say response. And by the way, uh, just because I'm using async there and the dot then here, I wouldn't do it in a project. I'm just showing you that there are multiple ways of doing this. In one of my projects, I'll still stick to one way of doing things to maintain readability. So here with the response, we want to return rest dot json like this, and then chain another dot then where we get, uh, actually we don't need any of the result that's returned, nothing gets returned. So we, we just wanna actually remove that post from our front end. So here we'll say posts equals, and we'll say post.filter to remove that post. And our filter will be post, where post dot, oh, actually post, dot id does not equal this id which will now remove all the posts that don't have this id uh, i mean keep just the posts that don't have this id meaning that it will only remove that post so let's save that let's look at our app let's reload just in case if we delete this it actually goes away if we delete this it goes away let's add a uh, a pop-up like a confirm pop-up that you know just in case people don't delete everything by mistake so let's copy all of this here we'll say uh, if confirm and the confirm will say are you sure so if they click ok on that we actually want to send that post that I mean that request and now if we click uh, delete it asks us are you sure if we click ok it actually deletes it all right let's now work on the edit button so let's go here so this is called from the post form or actually no from the home <laughs> So what we want to do now is that we want to, when we click on edit, we want to pass the details of that post down to this form and then populate the fields of that form with those details. So here, when we um, edit a post, we're going, we're going to set a new property. Here, I'll call it um, editing post. And initially, this will be, uh, we will have a body uh, that's an empty string, a title that's an empty string, and an ID that's null. Because the way our API works, when we want to edit a post, we want to send the body and the title and the ID as well to know which post to edit on the database. So now we want when we edit post, we want to set this editing post to this post that we clicked to edit. So we will say editing um, post equals this post that we got here. Simple as that, but we want to pass this editing post to the uh, to the post form as a prop. We can do uh, post uh, editing post equals editing post like this. But when we save, it's gonna change it to like some really nice minimal syntax that I've been wishing that it would happen on React a while ago, which is just doing curly braces editing post, which was which is gonna give that prop with that name and that value to our post form as well. Now we wanna use that in this uh, component and display those details. So let's go up here. Now what we can do, we can say um, title equals uh, editing post dot title up here. So we can say let title equals editing post dot title and do the same thing for body. Actually, I haven't tested this. I don't think it will update once we, yeah, it won't update. Actually, there's a problem. It says editing post is not defined. Okay, I know why, because uh, I, we need to declare editing post as a prop that we can uh, that we can get from outside. So we need to say export let remember like that uh, that was on the the app as well for the property name so we can need to say the same thing for editing post when i say export let editing post this will tell this component that we can receive this as a prop so let's save now if we look at our app so that's fine but the problem now they're set to uh, an empty string but if we click edit it will not change because it's not tracking any changes the way we fix that we can just use this syntax, we can say dollar colon, and we can do the same thing for body here. And this what will, it will tell our component will be like, look, we will assign this value, but whenever editing post.title changes, then assign that value again to title. So this is reactive to editing post. So if we save this, 
Now that should fix it. So here, if we click edit, there we go. We get the details from this component. I mean, from this post to our form right here. So if we click here, we get those and we click here, we get those. That's pretty cool. Uh, I want to as well change the button from add to update once we are in actually editing mode. So there's a simple trick. So right here, once our editing post has some value, when we click here, it will also have an ID because by default, it's null. So we can use that as a conditional. So down here, instead of just add, we will put a, an expression. So we'll do curly braces and we'll say editing post dot ID question mark. So if this is not null, uh, we will say update. Else if this is null, that means we're in add uh, or we're in creating mode, we'll say add. Let's save that. Let's look at our app. So by default, it says add when the ID is null, but when we click on edit, it becomes update. Cool. Let's now add the logic for actually uh, reaching to our server and updating this post. All right, let's go back. So this will happen through the on submit as well, of course. But now what we need to do, we need to add a, a new thing here. We will say, uh, because if we have an ID, we will actually send a post request to uh, API slash post slash that ID. And then it will be a put request to edit that post with that ID. So here we can just say a uh, condition and uh, we'll say if editing post dot ID. So if it's not null, then we are going to actually update a post. We're going to form a URL. Let's say uh, actually uh, here we can say, actually we need to declare these outside because we will need them later. So we'll say let, we'll create these two variables, uh, URL and method as well, because the method could be either a post or a put. So here we'll say URL equals, let's do backticks and uh, form our URL will be uh, API base URL uh, like this slash post slash uh, this ID. So we can do dollar sign curly brace and we can just copy and paste that inside. So that's our URL. And of course, now the method will be uh, put because we're in edit mode. So we'll say put like this. Else, if the ID is null, that means we're trying to create a post. So the URL will be um, back ticks and we'll say curly brace and we'll say API base URL slash post and the method will be post. And now we can say, uh, we can send the same request, but instead we can send it to URL because this uh, could be different. And the method is just method. So we can just omit this and send the same body. So here let's save and this should work. So let's look at our app. Let's put these side by side and let's look at our network tab. Let's clear that. And now if we just, I'm going to refresh just in case. Now, if we just submit a post, I'll put, I can't type in these fields. Uh, okay. I can't type in these fields because I didn't change these values. Now these values should actually be editing from editing posts. So here I'll say editing post dot title and dot body. This should fix that. Let's go back. All right. Now I can post. Uh, I mean, I can type. All right. So here, if I just send this, this should be a post request. Okay, here it says URL is not defined. Let's see that. Okay, this is URL. I don't know why the autocorrect is changing my variable names. That's very weird. I hope they fix this um, extension. All right, now it should work. If I put some gibberish and click add, and if I look at the network tab, it sent a post request to slash post. But now if I click on edit the same one and give it just like a bunch of V's like this, and click update. And if we go back, it's right, uh, right here. Okay. So this is the a put request and it's gone successfully. But of course the problem now it's actually added it because we didn't change the logic to add post in the home component. So let's do that. So let's go to the home component. So here in add post, we want to check if we already have that post, then we just want to edit it. We just want to replace it. So we'll do if posts dot find post where post dot ID equals this post that we got dot ID. So if this is truthy, that means we already have this post. That means this post was probably being edited. So we just want to find the index of it and replace it in our existing posts. So we'll say const index equals posts dot find index. And we want to find the index of post 
where post.id is the same condition that equals this post.id. Now that we have this index, we need to declare a new uh, array and say let posts updated equal posts. So we're just making a copy of it right now that we will assign later. And now we want to edit this post updated. So post updated dot splice and we remove starting from the index, we remove only one and then we replace it with this post. Now we can simply say posts, so our post equals posts updated, which will uh, re-render. Uh, else, uh, else we just do this. All right, let's save and let's see what this looks like. So now if we want to edit all, uh, if we want to edit this one as well and change it to like, like all X's like this, click update. There we go. It changes to all X's and it doesn't add a new one. Let's reset the form. Now the form should be reset from here. Can't, we can't reset it from inside and this title and body don't exist anymore. So we can remove that. And uh, here we can just assign it again to this. So we can just copy that. And after either of these uh, happen, we'll just uh, do this, paste this here. All right, let's go back. Now let's edit these from V's to W's like this. And we click update and the form resets. Cool. Let's add the post limiter that limits the number of posts uh, right here. So let's go back here. Let's go down to the markup. And after the form here, I'm going to add a uh, column with the width S3. And here I'll put some text, say limit number of posts. And after this, I'll put an input, input of type number. And this will have uh, no name. I'll bind it to some value and I'll call this value uh, post limit and uh, it won't have any ID, close that tag. And after this, we'll have a button and this will have a click event. So on colon click, I want to call this set limit and let's give it some uh, materialized classes, waves effect and uh, waves light and btn let's close that button and it will say set all right let's create this method uh, this function and this um, post limit and the set limit so we go up here say let post limit and uh, we'll create that function set limit let's go down here and say function set limit we'll uh, send a fetch uh, We'll say fetch to send a request and then we can just copy this. So to the base URL, URL slash posts slash that number. So we'll put the post limit right here and it's a get request and we don't really need to say anything. We just chain then and when we get a result, uh, we want to return res.json and here we chain another then and uh, we will get the posts. And here we'll say, actually we want to give it a different name to not conflict with the posts that we already have. And we'll say posts equal, uh, equals posts uh, data like this. All right, let's save everything. Uh, let's look at our app. Uh, let's give it a default value so it doesn't look empty like that. And let's give it like some margin on all sides. Uh, I'm just going to give it some inline styling, uh, right? Where is it? So it's this, I'm just going to say style equals margin 50 pixels like that and we want to give this post limit a default value of six all right let's save all right it looks much better now if we want only two posts we click set it doesn't work <laughs> it's because reference posts oh i made a typo my bad so right here this is posts not sorts let's save Let's go here. Want to get two? We said we get two. Three, we get three. If we put a massive number, we get all of them. All right, cool. Actually, I forgot to show you something. Let's actually build this app to see the bundle size of it. So here we're going to stop this development server. What is it? npm run build. Yeah, it's npm run build. So let's say npm run build. Hit enter. Okay, it's built. Let's uh, open this. Uh, open reveal in explorer. So we'll look at the public. The bundle is 196. Okay, that's unfair. Because <laughs> that's most of it is coming from this materialized JS. All right, I'm gonna just comment that for now and build it. So npm run build, just to show you the actual bundle size of Svelte itself. 
All right, cool. So if we look at public now, it's 21 kilobytes, which is absurdly low. And uh, 10 kilobytes or 11 kilobytes of this is actually coming from Svelte routing. So Svelte itself is only 10 kilobytes. Um, I mean, th this app itself, of course, there's no Svelte code inside of this bundle. It's just some JavaScript ins instructions with our own code, which is, um, this is insanely small and uh, very efficient. So yeah, I hope this gave you a uh, like a good start with Svelte. Um, I hope that you're excited about Svelte and uh, you want to use it and learn more about it. Thank you very much and I hope to see you soon. Bye.